Hi everyone, my name is Karis and welcome back to my corner of the internet where I talk about books and other things that I enjoy. Today's video is going to be a massive book haul. I've got over 30 books to talk about today. I understand that there's a huge irony in the fact that I just did an unhaul with 80 books and now I'm bringing 30 back onto my shelves. But April was my birthday month and I was just absolutely spoiled. I honestly can't believe how many lovely people got me things. I'm not going to get emotional here because I did already basically cry in my vlog just after I'd opened all of these gifts but I was just very very overwhelmed on my birthday. Once again a massive thank you not only to the people who got me these gifts but also to anyone who interacted with me in any way on my birthday. It really did mean a lot to me. I treated myself to a few things after my birthday as like a happy birthday to myself present and then the rest of the books are things that I have sort of accumulated between the last book haul that I did which I think I filmed at the end of February and today so like the end of April. I'm going to start with the things that I got as gifts. Anyone that I mention I will leave a link to their channel in the description. Please go over and check out all of these people because they are all just rays of sunshine. I'm not going to go in any real order other than the order that I've put the books next to me but the first two things that I've got to talk about were from my friend Louise who actually doesn't currently have a channel but we did meet through YouTube. She was my very first or one of the very first subscribers back in 2014 when I was on booktube the first time around. We became friends, I went over to Norway to stay with her and I was meant to be going again in 2020 but obviously couldn't. I miss her so much and it was so nice of her to send me a couple of books. The first thing that she sent to me was The Invisible Life of Adi LaRue by V. Schwab which I know a lot of my other friends are going to be really happy to see that I have because I know that Anna and Charlotte have both loved this one. Most people I'm assuming know what this is about because it was very very hyped, one of the most hyped releases of like the last few months. All that I know is that our main character Addy, people can't remember her so she can't ever really like form any relationships with anyone and then I think one day someone does remember her. I'm really excited to read this, I've never read a V Schwab book before so I hope this is a good place to start. It's going to be the one that I start with because it's the one that I've got and I know everyone shows Under the Dust Jacket but I mean it's pretty. And the second book that Louise sent to me was The Solitaire Mystery by Yerstein Gerda. So this wasn't one that was on my wish list, it was one that she like added, but I'm so glad that she did. You may know that I've been doing a little series on my channel where I read books from all around the world called Literally Travelling and the book that I read from Norway was recommended to me by Louise because Louise is Norwegian. Have I already said that? I don't know. Anyway, she recommended The Orange Girl by Yerstein Gerda, this same author, and I loved that. So I was really glad that she decided to send me another one of his books and I really can't wait to get around to this one to see if I like it as much as or more than that one. This one is about a 12 year old boy and his father who are on a journey to Greece and then the blurb says that they're going there in search of the boy's mother when a series of unusual incidents occurs. A dwarf gives Hans Thomas a magnifying glass, a baker gives him a bun containing a miniature book that tells the story of a sailor shipwrecked on a desert island, a pack of playing cards seem to have a life of its own, and what of the Joker who looks too deeply and too much. So I have no idea what's going to be going on in this book. It sounds very whimsical. So I'll have to dive into this one soon and definitely let Louise know what I think about it. And of course, I'll talk about it in a future video as well. Next here, I've got the gifts that Rhiannon from Welsh Reader sent to me. And... Oh, I was just spoiled by Rihanna. I wish that I had opened this one on camera because she'd packed the box like so nicely and everything was individually wrapped and there was a lovely card in there. It just melted my heart. I think I took a picture of it so I'll put a picture up but I wish I had it to show properly. But Rihanna sent me three books and then two other little bits as well. So the first book that she sent me was Killjoy by Holly Jackson which is the World Book Day book in the Good Girls Guide to Murder series which is what Rihanna and I buddy read and like how we became friends in the first place. So it's really fitting that this one came from her. All that I know about this is that it's about a murder mystery party. It's really short so hopefully I can just sit down one afternoon, maybe when the weather's nice outside and get through this and then I can message Rhiannon about it. The next book that she sent me is Always Love by Louise O'Neill. This is about a young woman who falls for a man who's 20 years older than her and he only ever sees her in secret and she slowly begins sort of like sacrificing everything else in her life to see him but on his terms and it says on the blurb that other people in her life are getting increasingly worried about her. In March I read After the Silence by Louise O'Neill which I loved and it reminded me of how much I do enjoy this author's work so I was really keen to get my hands on her books that I haven't read yet. I really enjoyed the exploration of a sort of toxic relationship in After the Silence so I think this is going to have similar vibes in that aspect. I'm actually going to talk about the little two gifts that Rhiannon got me before the final book because 
the final book like leads on to the next couple of gifts that other people got me it'll make sense when we get there so the first thing is this bookmark which is set out like one of the penguin books and it says reading is fundamental on it which is obviously a quote from drag race i really enjoy drag race i'm not a big fan of rupaul not gonna lie but i do love drag race the show especially the uk one and i feel like in our live shows that i do with rihanna i've been talking about it like every single week so this is very fitting and i'm definitely going to use it in the next book that i pick up and then she also got me this candle which is taylor swift inspired now she did message me being like what's your favorite taylor swift album and i was like that's very unsuspicious and then i was like why would you ask me such an impossible question but in the end i went with speak now because i feel like overall for like the nostalgia and the songs like the mix of it all it probably is speak now at this moment in time although don't ask me again in like a week's time because it might be different i think i made a good choice because this candle is lovely it's lavender and vanilla scented so nice and i think it's going to be so calm and it's going to be perfect for like a cozy evening so maybe like in a vlog or something i can light it and it's also like glittery at the top and purple like the album and then the final thing that rhiannon got me was get a life chloe brown by talia hibbert i am very very intrigued by this series when i first came back to booktube i completely dismissed this series i was like it's not for me i'm never gonna read it but the more that i've heard about it especially with the last book coming out the more i think i will really enjoy it and by writing it off completely i'm like depriving myself of something that i think i'm gonna love and it's gonna be super fun and just a really good time i think even in the past couple of months my tastes have developed so much and i'm so much more aware of the sort of things that i would enjoy now than what i was in like december last year for example and i think i was being very dismissive of contemporary romance as like an entire genre because I don't like the idea of reading things like the notebook and all that sort of thing but i think books like this are like so different from that because from what i've heard there are so many other topics that are covered in this as well other than just like boy meets girl they fall in love i can't explain it properly but hopefully that makes sense i've also heard that this one is very sex positive which we love to see and it does lead me nicely on to two more books that i got so i did actually end up being gifted take a hint danny brown and act your ag brown the second and third books in the trilogy so now i have all three of them when i put them all on my wish list i wasn't expecting to receive all of them but i am just over the moon that i have all of them i'm honestly so buzzing to to sit down and read all of these i'm thinking of doing a full reading vlog for the entire trilogy so do let me know if that's something you would be interested in so this one was sent to me by Aoife from pretty purple polka dots and i know that she really loved the first one i don't think she's got around to this one yet but i know she has been reading them and has been really enjoying them so again super grateful that she sent me this one and the third one actor ag brown came from sylvie from the tbr diaries and in her little note she also said that she loves this series as well and that's what i mean just like everyone seems to love this no matter what their tastes like traditionally are like Aoife loves it sylvie loves it I wouldn't say that normally they read the same sort of books on the whole, but they both loved it, so I think I'm going to as well. And then Sylvie very kindly sent me a second book. The second book that she sent me was Nick and Charlie by Alice Oseman, which is like the second little companion novella to the Heartstopper series. Shannon from 155 Books got me This Winter, which is the first one of these for Christmas, and I read it back in January. I thought it was the perfect little story and a little further insight into the lives of these characters that I love so much. So I'm really happy that I now own this one this will be another one that i can get through really quickly because it's got like illustrations and text messages and all that sort of thing in it heartstopper volume 4 is also coming out in may so i'm thinking that i might do some sort of marathon of the original three graphic novels and probably not the winter novella because it's not been that long since i read it and it is very christmas based but definitely this one i need to see like where this fits in terms of all the timelines but yeah that's something that i definitely want to do the lovely sabine from sabine's book nook who is one of my og booktube friends from like 2015 i want to say when we first started speaking got me the mothers by brit bennett first of all i just love this cover so much it's so colorful and pretty this one is about a 17 year old girl who's mourning her mother's recent suicide and following that she begins a relationship with a boy who is a few years older than her i think and their relationship isn't really that serious to begin with but it does result in a teenage pregnancy and then i think it follows both of their stories and the story of 
the main character's best friend through the years as they become adults and it looks at the impact that this teen pregnancy has had on all of their lives. I know very little other than what's on the blurb but I'm very intrigued. I am planning on reading The Vanishing Half in a couple of months time because it's a book club pick for my book club for June I think. So I'm not sure whether to read this one before or whether to read it afterwards. I know that this one came out before The Vanishing Half so if you're a Brit Bennett fan or you've read this one and The Vanishing Half then let me know what your thoughts on that are. The wonderful Victoria from What Victoria Read sent me The Wonder by Emma Donoghue and she put in her little note that because I'd just done an 80 book unhaul it seemed like the perfect time to have more books to fill the shelves which I have definitely achieved with this haul so thank you so much for sending this one my way Victoria. I heard a lot of people talking about this one last month during the Irish Readathon so I was very intrigued to get around to it myself. It follows the story of an English nurse who is sent to an Irish village to observe a young girl who hasn't eaten anything for months but is somehow still surviving and the blurb actually says that she's thriving and the nurse automatically thinks that it's a hoax but then as she gets to know the girl more she sort of begins to question that and the blurb says is Anna a fraud or a living wonder and I've just seen the little author's note at the back and it says the wonder is an invented story however it was inspired by almost 50 cases of so-called fasting girls hailed for surviving without food for long periods in the British Isles, Western Europe and North America between the 16th and 20th centuries. So that's really intriguing if it's got like this historical fiction element to it. The only Emma Donoghue book that I've read is Room and that was several years ago but I did really enjoy that so I'm really glad to have this so that I can give her work another go. Shannon from 155 Books also completely spoiled me by sending me two things. The first thing that she sent me was Six Tudor Queens, Jane Seymour, The Haunted Queen which is the third book in the Six Tudor Queen series by Alison Weir. She said in her note that she got me this one because when I first came back to booktube I was really into these. I'm so glad that I have this. I've been meaning to carry on with this series ever since I read the first one and still haven't got round to it because I'm intimidated by how long they are. But I think getting this just gives me a bit of a kick to prioritise them. So as the title of this series would suggest there are going to be six books in total and each one focuses around the lives of one of the wives of Henry VIII. What I really loved about them is that the Queen is the central character everything is sort of told not from her perspective because it's third person but it's like her life that you're living alongside her and as someone who doesn't really read a lot of really fact heavy biographies or that sort of thing I really liked that this blended a lot of information with a fictional aspect it made it a lot easier to read for me and I feel like I learned a lot from reading the first one the Catherine of Aragon one I do still need to read the Anne Boleyn one I will get around to it and then I will read this one and I do also have the fourth one as well because I got that one in a charity shop so I'm so glad that I have this one I to like bridge the gap and the second book that Shannon sent me is Oranges Are Not The Only Fruit by Jeanette Winterson I added this one to my wish list because Shah from Thoroughly enjoyed books and then subsequently Shannon really loved reading this one so I'm really glad to have it now and I can't wait to read it to talk about it with both of them. This is one that I feel like I've been meaning to read for so many years. I remember when I was 16 and going to do English as an A-level we got given this like four page document which was just list after list of books categorised by different themes to try and get us to expand our reading a little bit more rather than just the required reading that we had to do for our class and I remember seeing this on the list and I think a few of my friends actually read it and really enjoyed it at the time and I was always intrigued by it but just never got round to it but now that I own a copy I have no excuses anymore and it's also quite short a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be so this follows the story of a girl who's been brought up very religious and the blurb says that she seems destined for a life as a missionary but then one day she falls for one of her converts so then at 16 she decides to leave the church behind and pursue a life with this girl that she's fallen in love with. It is fiction but the main character is called Jeanette which is the author's name and I think it is inspired or based quite a lot on her own life. So I'm really interested to read this and then to maybe do a bit more research into like the context surrounding it. Leanne from Leanne Rose sent me Guard Your Heart by Sue Divin and I was so excited about this because this is a book that was 100% on my radar because of Leanne as a lot of books are she does have a lot of top tier recommendations but this one has been on my radar since she first mentioned it and I knew that it was coming out soon 
but I didn't know that it was already out. So this is a YA and it tells the story of two teenagers who are grown up in Derry. They're on like both sides of the community. So one of them is Catholic and one of them is Protestant. The blurb also says that they were both born on the day of the Northern Ireland peace deal and they're now 18. And I believe that basically one day the one of them is the victim of an attack and the other one is the only witness and then their lives sort of come together from that point. I don't know if it's gonna be a romance, the cover would possibly suggest that, but I'm just really interested to see how any sort of relationship between them is depicted in that context. The lovely Anna from Read Me at Midnight sent me Salt Water by Jessica Andrews, and she said in her note that this was one of her favourites of last year, and then I was like, oh, that makes me even more excited, but now that I think about it, I think I did probably, like, add it to my wish list and my story graph and stuff because of Anna. I feel like it probably was her that I got the original recommendation from. So I think this book focuses very much on identity. It follows the working class class girl from Sunderland who goes to university in London but finds herself really not fitting in and then at some point she goes to Ireland to sort of piece together her family history I want to say. It says piecing together family stories and trying to gain a sense of who she really is. I do tend to really love books that deal really heavily with identity and especially if there's a London element to the story and I do tend to enjoy or gravitate towards books that do focus on that idea of being in this big crowded city with so many people but feeling alone and not knowing what you're really doing or how to navigate things. So this sounds perfect for that vibe and I also really like that there's a university element to this because I feel like that's a time of life that isn't really in a lot of fiction. Emily from Emily Kathleen Reads sent me Pet by Aquaki Emezi. I know Shannon from 155 Books recently buddy read this with Olivia Savannah from Olivia's Catastrophe and I think they both really enjoyed it so I'm very keen to see what I think of it as well and I've just heard really great things about this author's work. I also really want to read The Death of Vivek Oji which is also by them so I'm really glad that I now have one of their books to give a go to. I am just going to read the blurb for this one because <laughs> I feel like I've read it several times and I'm still not really sure. It says there are no monsters anymore or so the children in the city of Lucille have been taught. Jam and her best friend Redemption have grown up with this lesson all their lives but when Jam meets Pet she begins to question what she's been told. Pet has come to hunt the evil lurking in Redemption's house but how do you save the world from monsters if no one will admit they exist? So it sounds super interesting and I think Although monsters might seem like more fantastical, I can imagine that this is going to use that as a way of exploring themes like identity and judgment of people, like that sort of thing. That's what I'm imagining, could be completely wrong. But again, this is a really nice little short one. So I think I will be able to get through it quite quickly. Rosie from Sparkles Books sent me If I Had Your Face by Francis Cha. And this is about the beauty industry in South Korea and follows four women sort of struggling to navigate this. It says on the blurb that it plunges us into the mesmerizing world of contemporary style, a place where plastic surgery is as routine as getting a haircut, where women compete for spots in secret room salons to entertain wealthy businessmen after hours, where K-pop stars are the object of all consuming obsession and ruthless social hierarchies dictate your every move. This has been on my radar for quite a while, so I'm so happy to have a copy of it now and it's a topic that I'm fascinated by and would love to learn more about. I'm thinking of doing a video in my little series where I read books from South Korea because I have a couple of them now, so this might be featuring in that at some point soon. Shah from Thoroughly Enjoyed Books sent me this absolute beast of a book, Plain Bad Heroines by Emily M. Danforth. Look at this. I'm intimidated, but I'm excited. There has been talk that this one will be the May book for Anna's book club, the Briar Rose book club, and if it is, I will definitely be reading it for that. This one instantly intrigued me when I heard that it was set in a boarding school. That is like a massive buzzword for me. Anything that deals with that sort of setting at all, I'm instantly like wanting to look into. And this also has like a bit of a mysterious element to it, I believe. So basically in the past, there were murders that went on at this school. It says that it was the infamous site of a series of tragic deaths over a hundred years ago. Soon to be the subject of a controversial horror movie about the rumored Brookhant's curse. The blurb also mentions that there are two girls at the school who are in love with each other and there's also wasps in it. I don't know what role the wasps are going to play but I am intrigued. So thank you so much Shah. This one will hopefully fingers crossed be getting read in May and then I can talk to everyone about it. And the final book that was a gift was Dead Famous by Greg Jenner and this is a non-fiction talking about 
the history of celebrity and this one was sent to me by charlotte from coiny reads amazon very rudely didn't put a note in but i suspected that it was probably from charlotte and i was right she did send this one over to me which again i was super happy about because as with a few of these the person who like caused it to be on my radar in the first place is the person who gifted it to me and i just love that because knowing that someone else loved it so much and they've gifted it to you it's like an even more special thing and i just can't wait to talk to everyone who's gifted me these things about the books if they've read them as well as i said it's the history of celebrity and the little tagline here says from the bronze age to the silver screen so it's like going right through time again that's a topic that really interests me but not something i've really looked into much so i think this is going to be a really good place to start and I also really like Greg Jenner. I've listened to quite a few episodes of his podcast on Charlotte's recommendation and I've really enjoyed them. So I feel like I am gonna really like the style of this and how it's all put together. So thank you to Charlotte and thank you to everyone who I've mentioned. As I said, all these people's links will be in the description, but I just wanted to say a massive, massive thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I feel completely undeserving, but I'm just so overwhelmed and grateful. I'm now gonna move on quickly to the books that I've got for myself. So two books that I've already read so I will just show quickly are Love After Love by Ingrid Passard and Cat's Eye by Margaret Atwood. I read this one for a book club with Book Bar, a new independent bookshop and wine bar in London and loved it. It was amazing but I'm going to talk about it more in my April wrapper and the same with Cat's Eye. I'm going to talk about this one in my April wrapper as well but I read this for Anna's Briar Rose book club. I did buy myself a few things from Depop over the past month or so as well. First of all Girl Woman Other by Bernadine Evaristo. I got this one because I really enjoyed reading The Empress Babe and then wanted to give more Bernadine Evaristo a go and obviously this is the one that most people talk about when they talk about Bernadine Evaristo because this one won the booker in 2019 just had to check that then i literally don't know what year it is anymore the empress babe was written in verse whereas this one isn't although i do think the narrative style is quite different i don't think it uses full stops yeah it doesn't seem to use full stops so i'm interested to see how the format is used and plays into the story also from depop i got my sister the serial killer which is quite a hyped book and deals with a girl whose sister is a serial killer as the title would suggest she always seems to kill her boyfriends and the sister always sort of helps her clear up afterwards until her sister starts dating someone that the main character is like in love with and it's sort of like her grappling between these two different relationships. Very intrigued to see how this whole topic is dealt with in this book. When I bought my sister the serial killer, the seller was also giving away proofs that they wanted to get rid of that you could just add into your parcels um, as part of like the postage and not obviously have to give any money because you can't buy or sell proofs. The first is This Must Be The Place by Maggie O'Farrell, which I was so happy to see going for free because I loved Hamnet, as you will know if you saw my March wrap up, and. I'm really keen to try some of Maggie O'Farrell's other work and this one was probably the one that interested me the most because it does deal with travel it says that it crosses continents and time zones that is enough to intrigue me I love anything that has travel as an element to it and then the other proof that I picked up is Uncanny Valley by Anna Vina and this is a memoir about a girl who was working for a literary agency I want to say and then I think she gets a job at a startup like tech internet company in silicon valley and the bottom of the little blurb says it never occurred to me that i might someday become one of the people working behind the internet because i had never considered that there were people behind the internet at all the topic just really instantly intrigues me because of how much of like a digital technological social media fueled age we're living in at the moment especially during this time when everyone is living their lives so much more online even than ever before so i'm just interested to see this author's perspective and hear their story in my april books that matter subscription box i got conjure women by afia atakora i don't actually really know what this is about i did read the blurb when i got it but i haven't read it again since so i guess i'll just read it out the pale skinned black eyed baby is a bad omen rue knows it but for once despite her skill as a midwife she doesn't know what to do times have changed since her mother held the power to influence the life and death of her fellow slaves freedom has come but this new world brings new dangers and when sickness swoops across her tight-knit community rue finds herself the focus of suspicion what secrets does she keep amidst the charred remains of the big house which spells has she conjured to threaten their children and why is she so wary of the charismatic preacher man who promises to save them all sounds like something i will enjoy i haven't heard 
anyone talk about this before so if you've read this then definitely let me know then the shops open back up and i went to waterstones and i got well i've got two books from waterstones they were from two different waterstones but both times i was like this is such a monumental occasion being back in a bookshop and I have to mark it by purchasing a book. So the first one I got is His Only Wife by Peace Adzo Medi. This was partly a cover by because I just think this is so beautiful. I'm a big fan of pastel so this is like totally my vibe and it's got these like cool sprayed edges and this copy was also signed so it just sold me on so many fronts. But the story does also sound very interesting. It's set in Ghana and it follows the story of a young woman whose parents have convinced her to have an arranged marriage because getting married to this man is going to elevate them financially possibly socially as well but the man that she's marrying is in a relationship with another woman and he's only marrying this woman the main character because his mum has chosen her as a distraction from the other woman and i think it's just going to follow our main character dealing with being in that situation being not his only wife so i'm just very interested again this would be a good pick for my literally traveling series and then the second waterstones pick that i got for myself is the perfect life of muako samida by clarissa gurnawan this has like a really cool holographic bit here which i love this is one that's been on my radar for a while. It's set in Japan and follows a girl who has died and then her friends and family begin like piecing together her life and finding out that she's possibly not as perfect as she would otherwise have seemed. Very interested to see what all these secrets are and I was meant to be going to Japan this year so hopefully this book can transport me there just a little bit. I mentioned that Love After Love was a book for the book club for book bar and I also got the May book come through yesterday so I thought I would show this quickly as well and that is Small Pleasures by Claire Chambers. All that I know about this is that it deals with a virgin birth or someone that says that she was a result of a virgin birth and also the fact that it's been shortlisted for the women's prize which is a prize that I follow like I'm interested in but I don't follow it to an extent where I'm going to go out and read all of the books. I am tempted when it gets down to the shortlist, depending on what's on it. But so far I've only read Transcendent Kingdom and this will be the second one from that list that I've read. I'm kind of interested to go into it not knowing very much and not having very many preconceived ideas about it. And then I can see if I think it's worthy of a place on the list. The one thing that I don't like about this is this little, what's this called? I just really hate it when there's like a short cover and then this second cover bit not a big fan of that and the final four books that i've got to talk about are the things that i bought for myself after my birthday as a little happy birthday treat to myself i did open these live on my reading sprints with anna the other day so some of you may already know what they are the first one is red of the bone by jacqueline woodson i've heard grace from gk reads talking about this and really recommending it so i wanted to give it a go i think it centers around a girl who is celebrating her coming of age and it also looks at like her family and how all these things have happened to get her to where she is today. I could be completely wrong. I'll let you know when I've read it. Secondly, I got Winter in Sokcho by Alyssa Shua Dusipin. Looks like this. It looks like a postcard, which I just think is the coolest book design I've ever seen. This is translated from French and it's set in a border town in South Korea, but like on the border of North Korea. That's all that I really know about it. The inside cover bit says it follows a young French Korean woman. And one evening she meets a French graphic novelist and the two of them form an uneasy relationship. She agrees to accompany him on his trips to discover an authentic career. As I said, career is a country that I'm very interested in, so hopefully can get around to this one soon and it can like transport me there a little bit. Next, I got The Last Apothecary by Sarah Penner, which sounds so interesting. I think it's told in a dual timeline. The one timeline is in the past and it follows a apothecary shop that sells like poison to women to use against their husbands. And the second timeline is in the present day and follows the story of a woman who's spending her 10th wedding anniversary alone and stumbles upon some clues that relate to these murders that were happening in the past. I'm just very interested to see how all these stories are gonna come together. And the very final book that I have to talk about today is a non-fiction and it's the address book by Deirdre Mask. It says, what street addresses reveal about identity, race, wealth, and power? That sounds right up my street thank you. The sort of social element of geography is what I really enjoyed when I studied geography and what I sort of wish I had gone on to do and learn more about at uni. So when I saw that this was the topic of a book, 
I just knew that I had to get myself a copy of it. So those were all of the books that I have hauled recently. If you've watched this whole thing, thank you so much for bearing with me. If you've read any of these books, I would love to hear your thoughts on them. Let me know in the comments, or if you just want to leave me an emoji to let me know that you've watched the video, I would love that as well. Thank you once again to anyone who helped make my birthday just an amazing day. I appreciate you all so, so much. Other than that though, that is it for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're all keeping safe and staying well, and I will see you again next time. Bye!